Residents in the Prescott Valley area are voicing concerns about the ambulance service in that spot. In some cases, residents say they've had to wait up to 30 minutes for an ambulance to respond, even during emergencies. Others have been told there is no ambulance available at all. Well, the slow response times are not only a concern for patients, but Prescott Valley police and firefighters as well. And as Fox 10's Nicole Garcia uncovered, fixing the issue could take even more time. In the Prescott Valley area, two sets of first responders are typically dispatched to emergency calls, a firefighter crew and an ambulance crew. Lifeline is the only ambulance provider in the area. It's a for-profit company. Right now, their response times are under scrutiny. So per the parents, the baby was down for about two minutes. Radio 3101, we're about uh, 12 minutes out, sir. We brought Rescue 61 with us. We're going to utilize it to get her to Station 61. In August, Central Arizona Fire and Medical Authority, or CAFMA, was first to arrive on scene of an eight-month-old girl suffering cardiac arrest. The ambulance crew stated it was 12 minutes away. Firefighters decided not to wait and transported the girl to where a medical helicopter was expected to arrive in eight minutes. And we can't wait on a scene with an eight-month-old infant uh, in that type of condition, we have to get them to a landing zone. The fire chief says it's become common to wait long periods of time for a lifeline ambulance and are now transporting patients themselves. What we're running are called rescues. We're not charging for transport and we're only using them when uh, AMR lifeline cannot get to the scene. They can't transport. They have an extended response time and we have a critical patient or a non-critical patient with uh, 30 minutes to an hour wait time for an ambulance. CAFMA has even borrowed four ambulances from other fire departments. And we're at a point up here now where this happens so often that we need to use something that's more appropriate to get the patients to the hospital. And because the state refuses to act, um, this is the position that we're in. But CAFMA is not certified by the Arizona Department of Health Services to provide ambulance transport. And now the state is investigating CAFMA, citing more than a dozen incidents that the state considers medically unnecessary, including the transport of the eight-month-old suffering cardiac arrest. We are trying to provide the best care that we can, uh, maintaining patient care is priority one. That's why we're running the rescues. No ambulance transport. We had to self transport. Jason and his family live in Dewey Humboldt. He says they called 911 after his 90 year old grandfather became disoriented. At the time, they were told there were no ambulances available. So they drove his grandfather to the emergency room in their own pickup. They didn't know until they got to the ER that. But his heart was out of rhythm and he was having a massive heart attack. After that, he lost trust in the ambulance service. I'm not confident at all. In fact, I've had the conversation with my family members my wife included. If I need an ambulance, you transport me. I don't want to wait an hour for an ambulance to show up to transport. Our response times are regulated by the Department of Health Services. We remain compliant with our response times. The regional boss for Lifeline says they've remained within standards outlined in their certificate of necessity issued by ADHS. The way we look at response times is a little bit different. We're not graded on by the Department of Health as an average response times. It's using a fractile compliance. According to ADHS documents, Lifeline's response time standards are in Prescott and Prescott Valley, 10 minutes or less for 80% of all emergency calls and 30 minutes or less for 98% of all calls. According to these state standards, it's acceptable for Lifeline crews to take up to 30 minutes in urban areas to arrive at the scene after being dispatched. In rural areas, the response time standards are up to 90 minutes. The state doesn't have a standard response time. It's different for every certified fire department and ambulance provider. Now, at times, will you have response times that are variable in a, in a particular area? That is absolutely possible. There's 11 units that are typically assigned to the Quad Cities area. 11 ambulances covering nearly 9,000 square miles. Lifeline says it has reached out to CAFMA in an effort to form a private-public partnership. This matter seems to be an issue with the fire chief and a desire for 
you know, you'll have to ask him why he's unwilling to work directly with AMR. AMR has tried to get me to sign a contract with them. I, I won't do that. I don't think it's necessary. Signing that will not magically make more units appear and more staff appear. It's the Department of Health Services job to address response time issues and to certify more ambulance providers. CAFMA and one other private company are currently both seeking to get certified, but the process could take up to two years. ADHS officials declined an on-camera interview for this story, but released a statement saying in part, ADHS cannot comment on open investigations. ADHS continues to review response times in addition to resource levels to ensure that there are not gaps in service. Prescott area residents will have to wait for CAFMA, Lifeline and the state to agree on solutions. Until then, they may also continue to wait longer for an ambulance to arrive when their life is on the line. Just confirming you're talking the call that 53 and myself are responding to. Affirmative, the gunshot wound. If Lifeline is indeed uh, level zero, can we dispatch engine 61 to take their rescue? Nicole Garcia, Fox 10 News. By the way, hundreds of Prescott Valley residents have signed a petition asking the state to improve ambulance response times. It has nearly 500 signatures.